The fourth and final adjusting entry accrues uncollected revenues. Recall from module four that the fourth adjusting entry involves a debit to an asset account and a credit to a revenue account. Two common examples of accounts that would require this type of adjusting entry are interest revenue and services rendered but not yet billed. For the first example, interest receivable, let's consider ABC Inc. lending $200,000 to XYZ Inc. on April 1st, 2008. So they're allowing XYZ to borrow $200,000. The loan is a one-year loan with an interest rate of 10% principal and interest due at maturity. What that means is that on April 1st, 2009, XYZ will have to return the $200,000 to ABC along with $20,000 in interest payments. 10% of $200,000 is $20,000. So they'll have to return $220,000 to ABC. So the question is, at the end of 2008, presuming that they prepare an annual financial statement, we are going to want to accrue some of the interest that has been earned or what, whatever interest has been earned by ABC at the end of December of 2008 because the interest is not going to all be earned on April 1st of 2009. It's going to be earned evenly throughout the one year term. So the interest that is earned in 2008 is represented as $200,000 times 10% times 9 over 12. This is the principal times rate times time equation to figure out interest. 9 over 12 is representing that it's 9 months in the current year out of a 12 month annual rate. The 10% represents an annual rate. So 12 is how many months are in a year and 9 is how many months in the current year you're accruing the interest. April 1st through December 31st is 9 months. When you do that calculation you come up with $15,000. So that means that even though we're going to receive $20,000 in interest April, on April 1st of 2009, 15000 of it is, is earned in the current year in 2008. And the way we record the earning of that interest is a debit to interest receivable and a credit to interest income. Interest receivable representing a claim to interest, future interest payments and interest income representing, uh, reflecting the fact that we've earned $15,000 in the current year. It's kind of like we charged rent on the money that someone borrowed. The second example is services rendered but not billed. In this case, if ABC Inc. is a lawn service company that maintains lawns on a monthly basis and then bills customers at the beginning of the following month, and they earn $20,000 in the month of December but will not bill the customers until January 5th, if they prepare annual financial statements on December 31st each year, what we're going to find is that even though they're not billing customers until January 5th, they have earned the $20,000 by the end of December. So at the end of December, we're going to want to accrue that $20,000 worth of revenue, despite the fact that it hasn't even been billed yet. And the way we'll record it is a credit to service revenue and a debit to customer receivables of $20,000. Customer receivables representing an asset account, service revenue representing um, an equity account or an income statement account of twenty thousand dollars generally you wouldn't need to record this adjusting entry as long if the month that they earn the money is is not the end of a reporting period because if you earn money in january but you collect it in the beginning of february that's okay because you're not generally going to come up with financial statements at the end of january uh, the same thing is true if you earn something in February and you don't collect it till March. It's okay if there's some timing differences there because you're not preparing uh, period financial statements generally for the month of January and the month of February. But when you get to the end of a reporting period, if you don't record this adjusting entry of $20,000 for service revenue, presumably you're going to be recording some expenses throughout December. So if you pay your lawn crew on a weekly basis, they're going to be accruing um, salary expenses throughout the month of December and it's going to look like you have no revenue being generated by those expenses. By doing this adjusting entry you actually do record the service revenue in the month of December which means that any expenses that you're recording throughout the month of December will be matched appropriately with the service revenue. So these two examples are common examples of the types of things that would require an adjusting entry to accrue uncollected revenues.